Hello, I'm Leanne from The Haberdashby and in this video I'm going to be making the reef pyjamas from Megan Nielsen Patterns. I'm going to be making a size small in these. I've got a slightly older version that does sizes XS to XL. I believe they've updated it now to sizes 0 to 20. One of the reasons I'm making this pyjama set is to help fundraise for Pancreatic Cancer Action. There is a fundraising event called Pyjamas for Pancam. You normally um, wear pyjamas to work or school to help fundraise, but I'm doing this in memory of my great uncle who sadly died from pancreatic cancer. And he was a tailor, so I thought, why not make some pyjamas and raffle them off, which is precisely what I'm doing. So I do have the support of Megan Nielsen, her team for this. Don't, don't do this without asking because it is only for uh, personal use normally, this pattern. If you're watching this video before the 16th of April 2021, there is a link in the description to the raffle tickets to win the exact pyjamas that I'm making here in this video. If you're watching it after that, I have changed the link to just direct you to Pancreatic Cancer Action's website. So, to make these pyjamas, I've got this beautiful cotton cardi. This is hand woven in India and so you've got some lovely imperfections right across it um, that will come out nicely and this selvage edge actually will probably come in quite useful. You do also need some elastic so I've got this elastic here this is actually made from natural rubber and organic cotton so it's a lot better for the environment than regular elastic. I've got some interfacing that's made out of recycled polyester, so we do need some interfacing for this pattern. And I've also laser engraved these special cork labels. Now you obviously don't need to put things like labels on your pair if you don't want to. I personally think it's a nice little touch if you can put your own little labels on, but each to their own. So I'm going to be making the camisole and version 3, so the, the hipster shorts. I'm going to get these cut out and then we're going to get cracking on sewing these together. Okay, so I've got all my pieces all cut out and the first thing that we need to do is stay stitch around this edge here. And that will help when we put the facing on. So the way that I've done my notches, the next step is actually to clip the curve on the back of the camisole, but I'm going to wait to do that uh, because otherwise I won't be able to see my notches. So next on the agenda is to sew these facings together. These are the yokes and the facings on the back. We need to be careful not to sew this top end up here. We don't sew that part, we just sew around each edge. So these seam allowances are only uh, supposed to be around about half a centimetre wide, so that's actually not very much. But if you look on the inside of your presser foot, there should be a small line. Um, just inside which is roughly in line with your 3 8 or just well just under the half a centimeter mark which you may have on your foot plate further out so what we do need to do is we need to back stitch at the beginning as well because this is actually part of what we need to do to this seam it's not Stay stitching, it's not easing or anything like that. This is a proper seam. So you want to do a few stitches forwards, a few back, and then do your seam.
So you want to go around these curves quite slowly really because they can get quite difficult quite quickly if you're not careful. What we need to do now is very very carefully clip these curves so that when we turn it out in a mo out the other way around in a moment uh, we'll get nice flat seams that sit right. Don't don't skip this part, don't skip the clipping because if you do it will bunch up and it won't sit properly, it'll look very strange. So I'll just quickly do this one and then I'll clip the curves and turn it the right way around. So the next thing that we need to do is to turn these the right way around. So you can attach a safety pin up here and push it down and through. What I'm going to try though is using my point turner to pull it down and through. There we are, there's the other one, right side out. So the next step is to press these, get these seams really nice and flat and looking really good. And that will help us with our next steps anyway, it's always good to press your seams. Um, it makes your fabric a lot easier to work with, especially when you've uh, just had to do something like this where you're turning something through quite a small space. And there we have our pressed rear yoke pieces. Uh, you always want to make sure that the interfaced side is always the, going to be the side that sits close to your skin and this uninterfaced side is the outside piece. So this next step that we need to do is we're attaching our yoke pieces to our camisole front and we're going to do this right sides together so that means that this uninterfaced part is your right side so you want to flip it over and attach now you always want to make sure that this short curve on this side lines up with the armhole this is this is your armhole side so you want the arms holes to match that and pop this one in place there and now we just need to stitch just across these edges at the top here Okay, so our next thing that we need to do is to take the front facing, put it right side down, so you should be looking at the interfacing, and you want to match it up with your front camisole, making sure that you don't accidentally sew the back into place so move them out of the way as you need to to make sure that you can align everything properly.
So we've got our front facing all sewn to our camisole. We need to carefully clip these curves just like we did before on the back yokes just so they don't get bunched when we turn them out. Then I'll turn it round and we'll press those seams into place like we did before. You won't need to clip down your straight lines because they're straight lines, but what will help is just knocking these corner edges off and you will need to clip on the inside of the V so that you can turn that round properly. So just take your corners off at an angle and that'll help you get nice square corners. You can carefully pull things through the right way round just by gently pulling your back yoke through. And that's your front facing attached. So now I'm going to get that all ironed up so um, it all sits nicely and flat. Okay. So that is all pressed and looking nice and neat. And I didn't catch a yoke at all, which is good. So the next step is actually to do this back of the camisole. So let's turn it around. work on this yoke. So what we need to do is align the edges so and then we're going to sew these together along this edge here. Okay, so now that we've got these two back yoke pieces sewn together, we're now actually going to attach the back. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to have this front piece out of the way, like so, and we need to do this right side up because we're going to put the back on wrong side up, so the two right sides are together like that. Like so, and we need to align our notches with our notches in the edges of our yoke as well. So that's why I didn't clip this earlier because I would have lost my notches by the way that I've done them. Um. Okay, and now when I sew this, I'm just gonna carefully sew just to the inside of these stitch lines. So we don't actually want these stitch lines to show on our right side. So if we sew just inside them, then that will encase them within the seam. been stitched and we don't have any seam lines showing which is brilliant. What we want to do is put it back this way. And try 
try and straighten it up a little bit. Because now we're going to be adding the back facing to it. So just as with the front facing, you want to put the back facing with the interfacing facing up. So it's right side down. Okay, so I've just finished sewing this back facing on. Um, I did go over it a few times to make sure that these corners of my yoke were caught properly and to make sure that I wasn't showing any of the seam lines, anything like that. Um, I'm quite happy with how it is now, so I'm just gonna tidy up this edge and I'm gonna clip in where I should have clipped earlier so that when I fold it back over it sits nicely and then I'm going to press it all into place. So I've pressed the back facing down so that's all sat nice and flat. Now the next thing that we need to do is these side seams. So we actually need to flip the facings up for this and sew along the edges of the facings as well because then we're going to flip them back down. Do make sure when you're doing this though that you align these two seams. Because even though my facings, because I've sewn extra bits here, don't line up anymore in terms of height. I wouldn't want to do that because now your seams wouldn't match. You see? So you want to make sure that your two seams match directly. Now that I've sewn these side seams, we can turn these facings back down. And we turn the canvas all the right way up. We're almost there. The next two steps, which can be done at about the same time, are to finish the edges of these facings and to finish the edges of the seams. Um, you can do this how you like, you could maybe use bias binding, you could maybe just zigzag the edges. Um, I think I'm going to roll mine a little bit like a hem and maybe zigzag it that way so there's all the raw edges are on the inside of the facing and I think for my seams I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to roll them in on themselves and then sew them together as one like that. Let's see. So. how they would look.
So this next step is to stitch in the ditch to set the facing and keep it in place. Now stitch in the ditch is also known as crack stitch. What you need to do is align your needle with the very centre of the seam. You're basically going to stitch in the middle of that seam so it produces an almost invisible stitch. So we're almost at the end of our camisole. It's looking pretty good so far. Last thing that we need to do is your bottom hem. It's fairly straightforward, it's a rolled hem. If you already have a rolled hem foot, it'll be very straightforward to use that. If not, what you need to do is press about half a centimetre in from the edge and then press another half a centimetre in again and so it forms like a roll like that. And then you just stitch around this and that forms your hem. It's fairly straightforward. Should be quite quick to do as well. I finished the hem here. Now this camisole is actually finished. Except, oh, one last thing. I'm going to pop my pajamas for pancan label just on the corner, just here by the hem. Now we're on to the shorts. So, as I said before, I'm doing the short hipster shorts, but I've actually decided to add the curved hem onto these shorts from version two. It does say that you can do this. It's a very simple addition, and it, I think it just, it'll make it look nicer in, in my view because it takes them from just being regular shorts to having that unique look that the reef shorts have. So the first thing that we actually do, uh, because I'm adding these hem pieces, is to sew the hems onto them. So, one, two. Put right sides together and then we're just going to sew along these bottom areas. So you can see that they've now got these wonderful curved hem lines. So the next step is to press these areas flat where I've just sewn and then I'm actually going to repeat it um, adding the curved hems onto the back pieces of the shorts. So the next step is to pop these front pieces right side together and we're going to align the notches. You can see how I've done my notches there. Align the notches in the crotch and we're actually going to sew all the way down along this crotch. We're not going to sew down these leg pieces, just down the crotch area. And now we do the same for the back of the shorts. We just sew around the crotch, we don't sew down the legs. So as you can see, I've now done my crotch seams on both my back pieces and my front pieces for the shorts. So now I'm going to finish my seam allowances off and then the next step is to open these out and that's when we will attach these side seams and the inseams together.
I have gone ahead and I've finished all of my side seams and my inseam the same way that I've finished all my seams in my camisole as well. So the next thing that we need to do is the hem. And because I've put these curved pieces on the hem, I actually need to sew them together. So let me move that out of the way. So I would need to sew them together on both of these edges and then press the top over so that when I sew them onto the shorts, I've already got a way of attaching them easily to where my seam allowance is here because um, we're going to attach them just above this seam here. So I've sewn together my hem facings, I have pressed open the seams and I've also pressed the top edge down. So what I need to do now is match them up with the hems on the shorts, right sides together, like so, and then we're going to stitch along this bottom edge of the hem so that we can turn them round and face on the other side. So I've sewn my two hem facings on. What I need to do now is clip just along these, the inside of this seam, just so when I fold it round, it sits properly. Um, and then once I've done that, I have, I'm actually going to press it round so it's facing the right way and understitch along this edge here. So under stitching, if you've not done it before, it's effectively like edge stitching, but it only goes on your facing or the piece that's going on the inside of the garment. It helps that piece to stay in place and not move when you're wearing um, your clothes. Uh, and it also means that you don't get any stitch lines on the top, um, you know, the piece that will be seen. Um, so it's a, it's a good way of hiding facings in a way, but also making sure that they stay put. So those are the next steps. Um, so I'm going to crack on with clipping the seams and then I'll get under stitching on that. You can see I have finished my understitching. Put that in there so you can see. And I've also pressed it so everything is looking nice the right way round. What I need to do now is stitch that facing to the inside. So I'll turn it inside out. And this is why we pressed this side over initially. So now, when we line it up, you can see that it just sits along that seam quite nicely and it encases everything in there so we don't have to worry about um, finishing any seams in there at all. So I'm just gonna stitch along this line as close to the edge as I can so that it's as close to the seam as possible um, and that will be the hem of the shorts finished then.
and here we have our finished hem. So the bottom of our shorts are now done. The next thing that uh, I'm going to do is actually, whilst I'm around the hem area, is attach the cork label pyjamas for Pancan. I'm going to pop that over here by this seam so that it will match with where I've placed the one on the camisole. Uh, and then the next thing after that is to start attaching our waistband. So these shorts are very near to completion now, which is quite exciting. got both our waistband pieces here and I've just aligned them because what we're going to do first is we're going to sew along these edges here on both sides so a seam on that side a seam on that side and then we're pressing the seams open I've pressed open my seams, I've also pressed this edge up as well and now we're going to attach our waistband to our shorts so. I'm going to put right sides together so just pop your shorts in between. You want to make sure you align the seams as well and find your notches and make sure these align with your centre seams down your front and your back as well. So I'm going to get this all pinned together and then we're going to sew all the way around our waistband. I've pressed my seam up and I've also pressed the waistband over so everything now is aligned with where I've stitched that seam so I'm going to pin this in place and we need to sew all the way around except for five centimeters which I'm actually going to place alongside one of these side seams because we still need to get in to push our elastic through and round so you want all the way around except for that five centimeter point, sort of maybe there-ish. I've actually left larger than five centimetre gap here, so I've got plenty of space to get in and, and thread the elastic through. So I've got my elastic here, I've cut it actually five centimetres shorter than it suggests on the packet and the reason for that is because this is natural rubber, it stretches that bit more than uh, regular elastic does, um, so you want to give it a little bit less um, in terms of length so that um, you've got the same amount of stretch. So I have my, my safety pin, I'm just going to thread that through the end, one end of the elastic and then 
we're going to pop it inside and we're going to use that safety pin to draw our elastic through our waistband. So I've got my elastic all the way around. Now we want to overlap. Well, we'll take these the safety pin off first. I'm going to overlap these like this. I'm going to sew in here to keep the elastic bound together, and then we're going to stitch this casing on the, this opening in the casing for the waistband closed. So our elastic's in, I've sealed up this last section where we put it in, and now give it a few stretches to distribute, get it even. So now our last job is to sew right down the middle of this waist waistband, catching all the elastic and you need to stretch the waistband out as you do that so that um, everything is even. And then that is everything done then. That, that's your pair of shorts. And that's the reef pyjamas finished. They should be really comfortable to wear either as pyjamas or as loungewear because they are designed to have a lot of give so that you can be really comfortable when you're wearing them. Thank you for watching this video. Please hit like if you like the video, please consider subscribing. Have fun making your own reef pyjamas and again if you're watching this before April 16th please do consider buying a raffle ticket to win these pyjamas in aid of pancreatic cancer action.